Welcome back. Today, I want to give you some practices that we can do throughout our day, which will benefit us spiritually, will benefit our sitting meditations. And I don't want to give you just one practice. I want to give you a handful of practices that you can try out and rotate through your day. When one, you get used to one of them, try out another. Pull the next tool out of your toolbox and now you're having fun. Your heart and your mind are staying interested in your practices and you get different results and the results begin to compound. You use one thing and you use another and they begin to compound with each other. So it's really a magical process to keep trying another and another process. So let's get into it. So first of all, I always like to start out with heart rate variability resonance, right? It's, it's really our bedrock. If we don't have that resonance between the breath and the heart, then we're just spinning our wheels in meditation. So this is always a very, very good place to begin. Let's start to get into the low idle state right away. And so how can we do that throughout our day? Well, we might not be able to sit and do heart rate variability resonant breathing. You can, you can pull out the app if you have a five minute break and do some heart rate variability resonant breathing. But how can I do this throughout my day? Well, if I just remember AMOL, AMOL is magical. Always make the out breath longer. It's so simple, right? So I can be going through my day. I can be going through a stressful meeting. I can be going through a presentation where I'm worried. I could be going into a conversation where I'm worried about the outcome. And I can remember, hey, wait a minute. Just make your out breath a little bit longer. All right? Amol, always make the out breath longer. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to relax. And I'm going to do that over and over and over. And I'm going to make the out breath longer every time. And, and you know what? I'm okay. I'm okay now. I'm going to do a stressful situation. No problem. I've got AMOL. So that's the first one that I want to give to you. AMOL. Try that out during your day. Maybe you're exercising. Can I make my out breath a little bit longer as I'm exercising, as I'm jogging, as I'm on my bike? Can I make the out breath a little bit longer and see what it does to me? I told the story about the real Kriya Yoga that Ashokji told me. He said, if you can ohm through your chakras as things arise in your day, right? So I'm going through my day and something happens and a negative emotion pops up its head and I feel it. I feel it in my body and I recognize, oh my goodness, I think that's coming from the third chakra or I think that's coming from the heart or I think it's coming from the second chakra or I think it's coming from my throat. Those are some possibilities, right? I think it's coming from there or maybe it's coming from multiple chakras. I'm not quite sure. I think maybe it's the third and the fourth chakra together. Well, I'm going to ohm into it immediately. So the, the emotion arises and I mentally chant ohm into it. Ohm into the emotion. And then I feel the emotion again. Did it shrink? Well, not yet. Not yet. That's fine. Om. Into the emotion as I feel it in the body, right? Wherever I feel it, it doesn't matter. But I feel it and I chant Om into it. Om. Mentally, right? I'm mentally doing this. Nobody has to know that I'm doing this. I can be sitting in my office having a conversation and still I'm oming into that negative emotion as I feel it in the body. And then I check again. Did it shrink down? I think it did. It, it, it seems to be washing out or dissipating. Well, don't stop. Keep going until it's totally gone. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh I'm going to ohm it out. 
And pretty soon, the emotion is totally gone. And notice what happens to your mind as you do that. The mind becomes clear. The heart becomes clear. And suddenly, you see things more clearly. Oh, my goodness. I was so upset about that thing. And, and really, I can now see why that person was doing that, why they said the things that they say. It's really about their problem, and they were projecting it onto me, and I can see that now, and I actually have compassion instead of being angry or upset or hurt. I actually see clearly enough to have compassion for them. That's the magic that's the real Kriya Yoga. And when you're practicing Kriya, how do you know that you're doing it well? Well, you get that feeling more and more that I am clear and I can see things clearly. I can see where they are coming from. And I actually have a little bit of compassion or maybe a lot of compassion. That's the amazing thing about this therapy. So Ashokji told me how to do this. He told me to do it as often as possible. And I dubbed it Kriya therapy because you're doing it throughout the day. So I'm going to go home. I'm going to sit in my meditation chair. I'm going to do the same thing in the Kriya Yoga. I'm going to do that same Om Japa throughout all of the chakras. But in my day, I have this wonderful opportunity to actually feel the emotion directly ohm directly into it and see the result of that, right? Now, the unconscious mind has to be willing to let it go. So a question you can ask during this process or before this process is, is it all right with my unconscious mind that I go ahead and, I mean, have I lived with this long enough? Oh my God, here it comes again. Have I lived with this long enough? Is it okay? Sometimes the unconscious mind is not ready. It's like, this was too big and it was too sudden and I've got to process it for a while. I got to think about it. But eventually the unconscious mind goes, oh yeah, we've had this forever. <laughs> we've dealt with this forever and I'm done. I don't need this. I don't need to carry this around. And now you have permission. You're not fighting yourself internally and you own into it and just, whew, it's gone. It's just gone. And don't stop till it's totally gone. All right. Just keep going. So you can feel that difference that, oh my God, it was there. And then I ohmed into it and now it's gone. And it's magical. Okay, so that's the second one we can do throughout our day. We don't have any emotion coming up. Oh, that's fine. I'll just, I love my heart. I'm going to ohm into my heart. I love that. I'm going to ohm into my throat. Ah, I'm getting some inspiration. I think I'm getting a little trickle of bliss. That's what the big bliss training is about, right? Getting that trickle of bliss throughout our day. Of course, I couldn't give you meditation all day without Hakala. And that's really so magical because how often do you hear about the right brain? How often do you hear about expansion and getting into the right brain? You know, meditation, it's always about the breath. Everybody's teaching the beginning of meditation. We talk about bhakti yoga, but how often do we talk about the infinite? And so here in Hakala is this nice little practice where throughout our day, we can get in touch with the idea of the infinite, with a neurological driver. We just pick one point in front of us, a little bit above eye level. I'm looking at that one point. And as I look at that one point, I'm going to expand my vision, my peripheral, my perception into my peripheral vision so I can see my fingers. I'm looking at that one point, but I can still see my fingers. I'm looking at everything. And then I try and take everything in as one piece. And it will cause your pupils to dilate. So now your eyes are dilating. It's a neurological driver. And it sends you straight into the right brain. It's very magical. And the more we practice it, the more it grows. And you're actually growing your right brain, your right hippocampus is actually getting bigger as we do this. It's like lifting weights for your right brain and it actually gets bigger. Don't believe me? Go read the studies about the New York taxi drivers. Now, even today, when you're a taxi driver, you're still doing a lot of spatial computation, right? 
even if you're using GPS. But imagine no GPS and you've got to know New York and you've got to know five ways to get there in case one is blocked. And the taxi drivers in New York, they found that the right hippocampus had grown because of all that spatial computation. So what are you doing in Hakala? You are embracing the spatial program in your brain and it causes the right brain to actually grow and expand. And more importantly, your access to expansion becomes easier and easier and that's the important point. So I'm walking through my day and I'm just going into Hakala. I'm walking down the office hallway, I'm going into Hakala. I'm talking to somebody just for a moment, I'm going into Hakala. You do it again and again and again and it becomes this beautiful practice which is growing inside of you. And then you go into meditation <laughs> and you go into heart rate variability resonance and you look into the spiritual eye and you go into Hakala and magical things happen. A really wonderful practice is bhakti yoga. And another way to do bhakti yoga is the cute baby meditation. So if you don't have any practice with bhakti, try out the cute baby meditation. And you can do this throughout the day. You put a cute baby on your telephone. You put a cute kitten on your telephone. You want to picture that as you look at it, as you look at it, you instantly go, oh, you know, I look at the picture and, oh my God, it's so cute. It's killing me. <laughs> That's what you want. You want that feeling to naturally arise. And then you hold the feeling as long as you possibly can. And now you're doing the cute baby meditation. You can do it throughout your day. You look, you hold it. Okay, you're done. And you go about your business. Okay, I've got a minute. I look at it. Oh and I hold the feeling as long as possible. And now we're lifting weights for the left amygdala. And this is the center of bliss and joy and pure love in the brain. And so we're growing our ability to feel and to hold on to those really, really deep and inspirational feelings. And it will grow your meditation like bonkers. Okay. I had a yogi. He said, I've been seeing the spiritual eye for years. And then I did five minutes. That's all I did. I just did five minutes of the cute baby meditation every day. And suddenly I'm looking into the spiritual eye and never felt anything. And now I'm feeling bliss from the spiritual eye. Oh my goodness. That is crazy. Amazing. From five minutes of the cute baby meditation every day for like a week. I think it was a week or two weeks and then suddenly the bliss started coming through. I mean, that's amazing, right? So throughout our day, we look at our phone. Oh my goodness. And you hold the feeling as long as possible. That is the cute baby meditation. And you can do it over and over and over again. You can remember the picture. Oh my goodness, so cute. And you hold that feeling. Now, how does that apply to bhakti? You need a picture of your favorite ishta. It doesn't have to be what everybody say the picture is, right? But you just need a picture of your favorite ishta devata, your favorite form of the divine, be it Mother Mary, be it Jesus Christ, be it Buddha, be it Kali, be it anybody. Maybe it's for you, it's a guardian angel. And you look at that picture of a guardian angel that you found, and it makes you go, oh, Wow. And you just hold that feeling, right? Or, oh, I love it. And you just hold that feeling. Now you're practicing bhakti in the same manner. And it's doing the same exact thing. You're awakening. You're clearing the axis. And you are actually growing the left amygdala, the center of joy and bliss and pure love. In the talking to the higher self training at the very end of the training, I give a very powerful exercise. I call it the angel exercise. And to do that, I'm going to give you the short version. It's much better if you take the whole training, you walk through the whole progression, and then at the very end, you do the angel exercise. But let me give it to you the very short version. So those of you who have taken talking to the higher self training, you'll remember this. And this is how you practice that throughout the day. So you go through the progression once or twice a day, right? And that eases your access. It helps to develop your intuition and your ability to connect to the higher self. 
At the very end of this, you practice the angel exercise. And then as you walk through your day, you can continue to practice this angel exercise. And so to do it, you imagine, which is an inducing, you are inducing something. So you imagine that your guardian angel is sneaking up only over your left shoulder, okay? Because we're working with the left amygdala. So only over my left shoulder, I imagine that my guardian angel is sneaking up on me. Maybe it's divine mother. Maybe it's my heavenly father. Maybe it's my beloved friend. However, I am thinking about my Ishta Devanta. Or maybe I don't know. So I'm just going to know that something, some component of my higher self, right, is going to come to me over my left shoulder. And so I imagine they're sneaking up on me. And I look, I begin to look, but I don't actually look. So I, and then I feel their presence, or maybe I get a vision of it, right? That's the, that is the wonderful thing about walking through that progression. Your ability to pick up on these things visually also increases, but most important is that we actually feel it. So I'm feeling as if my guardian angel is sneaking up on me, and then I look, but I don't look. And that's when I get the strong hit of the feeling or the vision of my Ishta Devata. And they're looking over me, right? So I'm going through my day and I make that connection, right? And I'm going through my day and I make that connection. And I just do this over and over and over again throughout my day. And it's absolutely transformative. And pretty soon, it will begin communicating with you, either through visions or through symbolic visions or through words, possibly. However it comes to you, it doesn't really matter. It's making that connection over and over again. That is the magic. You turn it into an all-day practice, right? They're sneaking up on you and you look but you don't look and you begin to make that connection with your left amygdala over and over and over again. Absolutely transformative. All of this comes back to the practice of the presence of God by Brother Lawrence. It's absolutely wonderful little book. I highly recommend it. I'm going to put a link down below this video if you want to check that out on Amazon. I highly recommend it. It's worthwhile to read. And also there's an old movie called The Reluctant Saint. And I remember watching this when I was an applicant to become a monastic. And I watched this for years over and over. Everybody knew it was my favorite movie. And I, I just loved the purity and the simplicity of the character in The Reluctant Saint. Just, in fact, I'm going to go watch it today. It was such a beautiful movie. And I, it's one of my all-time favorites. So I hope you enjoy that. It's really beautiful. And what he's doing, the magic that he creates, is he is practicing the presence. He doesn't have meditation. He doesn't have heart rate variability resonance. He doesn't have all of these tools that we have. He just has practicing the presence. And it becomes absolutely magical. And so there's a couple ways that you can practice the presence of the divine in your life every day. So you can imagine that it's your Ishta Devata and they're coming over your shoulder. And that's really deep. Okay, So that's going to use more of the left amygdala. And you can also imagine that the presence, the uninterrupted, omnipotent, omnipresent presence of the divine is around you all the time. So think about that. It's all around you. What part of the brain do you think that is awakening? That's right. It's the right hippocampus. You got it right because you've been paying attention, right? Absolutely wonderful. It's a wonderful way. So now we have all these practices with the left amygdala, and now we have a practice spreading out everywhere in expansion, and that's the practice that awakens the right brain. So you have your Ishta Devata, right? your guardian angel, and you have this all-encompassing presence and intelligence all around you. And when you go into samadhi, okay, it's kind of like layers. So the first samadhi is usually almost always spaciousness. Sometimes it's emptiness, 
but usually it's spaciousness. And then we go a little bit deeper into nothingness. Sometimes yogis get a little afraid. Oh my God, I came to the end of everything and it's nothing. That's kind of freaky when you're not used to that, right? But I trust me, keep going. It gets even better. You go down one more layer and it's this infinite presence, this infinite intelligence, this all-knowing, all-encompassing, everywhere intelligence, and you're floating in it with no perception of your body nor your astral form either. It's just you, just your soul floating in that. That pure perception is a samadhi, right? That's how we define it, okay? So being in that infinite intelligence is very similar to the dualistic process I'm talking about where I'm walking around my day and I begin to perceive the same thing. Now, I'm not going to perceive it like in a samadhi, but I can imagine it. And so is it just my imagination? In the beginning, yes, but you are inducing something. And pretty soon you create that connection with the right brain, with the right hippocampus, and you feel it. You feel that connection. And now it's not just your imagination. I didn't have to see anything. I didn't have to visualize anything. I am feeling my way that this intelligence is all around me. I'm just feeling it that way, right? And that allows me to connect to the right brain. And now it becomes something more than what I was initially practicing. There's a feeling, there's a presence, and I am feeling it. I am aware of it. And you're getting a little bit a tiny little bit of what the yogi perceives in the samadhi. But you're in a dual, you're, you're getting it in a dualistic fashion because I'm still here and the divine is here, right? But it's still profound. So these are your tools I'm presenting today. Try them out. Try them on for size. Try out multiple ones. You can try out one one day and one another day or multiple in one day. It doesn't matter. Just mix and match and have fun and use them so that you always have them available. It's like, here's one, here's another. And you, now you've got a toolbox which is really dynamic and it can apply to multiple situations in your life. I'm going into a meeting. Oh yeah, Amal, oh, this is good. <laughs> I'm feeling a little, little down. What about that cute baby, oh my God, the cute baby. And now I'm lifting myself up. I'm lifting myself up. I'm getting inspired again. So it's magical. Just these processes are absolutely magical. I hope you love them. I hope you love this video. If you did, be sure to hit that bell down below so I can see all of you next time.